In this video, we're going to talk a bit about uninitialized data. So in the last few videos, we were setting up a data that was initialized to a specific value. In some cases, we just want to set some memory aside so that we can possibly store data in it later. So to be able to do that, we have to understand how to create uninitialized data. And then we have to understand how to actually move data into those uninitialized blocks that we have set up. So let's talk a bit about that. I'm going to go ahead and create a file. I'll just call it unit for uninitialized. And what we need to do is we need to introduce a new section for this. And that section is called the BSS section. So the BSS section, I believe, stands for block starting symbol. And what it's used for is it's used for reserving space in memory. So for example, I can set up a variable called num. And then we have to use a different keyword rather than db for define byte, for instance, we would use resb for reserve byte. So it reserves bytes of space rather than defining bytes of space. So defining means we're setting a value, reserving means we're just setting that space aside. So this, this works for essentially all the different ones. We have uh, resb for reserve bits, and then we can do it with word and double word and all of these different ones as well. So we're able to use each of these uh, using the res keyword. So it's the same sort of process of uh, db. So rather than having the d for divine, we have res for reserve. And then what we do is we say, how many do we want to reserve? So if I want to reserve three bytes, I could say resb three. What that will do is it reserve three bytes of data on memory. And that's the way that we can set up uninitialized data. So it sets aside this space in memory and assigns it to that label num. And then what we could do is we could say, okay, so let's set up our text section and we can have our uh, global start and then we get our start label here. And what we can do is we can move data into this section. Now to move data into the section is going to be interesting. So your first thought might be, well, we could move into num, say a value like one, for instance. This won't work. We can't directly place a value into a memory slot. And the reason being is similar to when we were moving data from memory into registers. And that's that x86 doesn't have an understanding of the sizes of these two components. It doesn't understand how big num is, doesn't understand how big the thing that we're you know, moving the data from is. So we need to give that context. And to give that context, what we would have to do is we would have to have the data in a register first. So for instance, I can move into BL, the value one, and then move from BL into that memory space. Because BL is the byte of register B, it will understand that we're working with byte sized data, right? So we have the byte in BL gets moved into the byte memory slot of num. Now, similar to working with other pieces of memory, this num points to the first memory location. If I want to get to the second, I do plus one. If I want to get to the next one, I do plus two, right? And this is working with bytes. If we were working with, say, something bigger, right? Um, like we're working with words, it would be two and then four and then so on like that. Remember that each of these values is a byte. So this is moving one byte forward in memory. This is moving two bytes forward. It's moving three bytes forward so on and so forth like this. So the idea is that we're placing into the first reserved byte the value that's currently in BL. And just to demonstrate more of this, what I'll do is I'll move into num uh, plus one, the value of BL, and then we'll move into uh, num plus two, the value of BL. And then again, we'll just do the, the same sort of uh, stuff to make our program exit. And that will be our program. So let's get into the actual debugger and see how this works. So let's go ahead and assemble as usual. Or sorry, I didn't name it data this time. I named it un, sorry. What did I name it here? I named it on it. So on it dot O unit dot S. And you can see I actually got an error here of an invalid combination. Let's just take a look at that. So it's on line 14. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I forgot to uh, give this a value. There we go. So we're moving one into EAX. I just forgot about that there. Now everything will assemble properly. And then we can load in elf i386 using these. So say so unit.o. And now we can GDB. So we'll break 
at start. We'll set our layout to ASM and we'll go ahead and run. And as you can see, our uninitialized data is set in, in the same space that we have been working in 804A000. And if I take a look at this memory slot, it'll just be the one memory slot since we just had three bytes in it. You'll see that it all is zero right now, as is all of our uninitialized memory, right? So we have that all as zeros. Now let me show you what happens as we continue to move through this. So we move one into BL, and then we load the first one into memory. Okay, so let's take a look at what our memory looks like now. As you can see, we have one in that first slot, the rightmost slot, and everything else is still zero because it's all uninitialized still. And then as we move into the second instruction, that moves it into the second slot. So 0x8048000. As you can see, we have one and then another one next to it. And as expected, if we do that one more time, we end up with that exact same process, right? So we have x over x, 0x, 0, We can see that we now have three ones in memory. So you can see this, this should be pretty intuitive and straightforward, right? We're just moving the value into memory. That, that's pretty simple, right? And this is really the way that we can work with uninitialized data. So really all it's doing is it's saying this part is going to be reserved. We've reserved this much space in memory for this particular use. And then we can, you know, place data into that memory as we need to. And then we can retrieve it in the exact same way that we've been doing throughout all of these different videos. So this is a fairly simple and straightforward idea. Now, one final thing that I want to talk about with initialization of data that may be useful um, as you're working through different assembly programs is you could do something relatively similar in the data section. Um, but instead of reserving bytes, what we can do instead is we can actually define with a default value. So what you could do is you could say, for instance, uh, we'll say num2, I'm going to define as a byte, as we've been doing. And what I want to do is I want to set up, say, um, let's say three memory slots as well. And then I could say dupe, let's say two. What this will do is it will write two into memory three times. And that's basically the same as initializing data, but we're initializing sort of a default value repeatedly. So we're putting three different instances of the value two. That's the idea of what's happening here. Um, let me show you what that looks like. We'll do like a um, we'll do like a sample. Uh, we'll move from uh, BL from num two, let's say. And this is just to get an idea of where the memory address is, so that we can actually easily see it. Uh, so we'll say break underscore start. We'll run, and we'll go layout to ASM. So as you can see, that's now placed at 804A000. You can see that my uninitialized data has moved. It's now at four, five, and six because there was something that was initialized before it. And what we could do is we could say, okay, let's take a look at that uh, 0x804A000. And as you can see, it has three instances of the value two, like I said, right? So the purpose of this is to initialize a slot of memory to a specific value. You can see that when you look at the reserve of the data, so when we reserve in the BSS section, everything is still set to the default value. In this case, that would be zero. If I want that to be a specific value, I can use that dupe instruction to do that. So that's another way that we can sort of initialize this data. So those are the two things that I want you to just sort of keep in mind is that using BSS, you can reserve areas of memory. And then using data, you can actually use dupe to initialize a number of different sets of data for us. So those are two sort of ways that we could work with data that is either not initialized or initialized to a default value. So thank you for watching this video. This gives you a really good overview now of all the different ways that we can sort of interact with data. And in the next few videos, I want to start to introduce some more instructions of x86 and sort of get us more programming now that we understand the different ways of working with data. You can start to write some programs that actually work with this data and get, better, get a better understanding of some of the different instructions that exist in x86 programming.